everyone! Glad to have you here today. I realized it's been quite a while since I've brought you an installment of Bite Size Reviews. This is where I like to pack in about five reviews in 10 minutes time. Here the topic is Essence. I've been trying a handful of new products as well as one thing that I think has been around a decent amount of time, but I've been working with it quite extensively lately and I feel like I'm ready to share a review on that as well. So let's dig in. The first thing I want to talk about is this My Skin Perfector Tinted Primer. It claims to have an instant blur effect and a natural matte finish. This is something that's going to come in a small range of shades. I have it in shade 10 light beige and they call it a lightweight mousse texture with a velvety feel that's going to make the pores optically disappear while leaving skin looking smooth with a natural matte finish. And they say you could wear this alone or as the name implies as a primer. I do feel like when you squeeze it out of the tube you really notice that mousse like texture. You actually feel like man is this going to be somewhat thick but once you start blending it out on the skin and you'll notice this a lot if you choose to use your fingers it really does thin out and it has maybe just a hint of greasiness in there that I've noticed in the texture. It really does thin out quite dramatically and as you blend that out on the skin yes it's going to have that matte quality to it but it's so thin I don't feel like it's doing an effective job of actually blurring the pores. I think about products like Benefits Professional or for me the one I really prefer from that range is the hydrating option and I feel like it maintains a little bit of thickness and it kind of needs that to be able to work with a texture issue on your skin which may be pores. So for me I know that if I'm going to see pores they're going to be kind of like the sides of the nose, maybe this inner cheek area a little bit as well and I felt like after applying this product I was honestly seeing the pores even more. There was something about that matte finish just kind of glazing over the top of the skin um, but yet a lack of thickness so nothing was really feeling filled in. Did it give my skin a little extra evenness overall? I think it definitely did that. If you do have some dry areas it seems to exaggerate that kind of look even more. So it may depend a little bit person to person. What kind of skin type do you have? What kind of look do you prefer? For me I'm kind of going to err on the side of let's let the foundation work on giving me the color and the coverage and that primer product really needs to be all about texture I think and if we're talking pore filling it needs to still keep some of that thickness to effectively fill in the pores. Just my opinion here but I'm not a big fan of this. Now here's another product I was really attracted to because I love a peachy corrector. This one comes in two tones and I got it in um, more of the pinky tone shade, the rosé beige shade as they say but I think they have something even a little bit deeper and with a little bit more of an orangey peachy infusion but it's called High Beauty and they call it that because it's got the hemp seed oil. It claims to be moisturizing and vegan and it calls itself an under eye brightening concealer. So the question here is, is it going to merely brighten or will it also actually correct and make your skin look more flawless as a result of wearing this? Let's take you through putting it on. I dab this on uh, my dark circle areas, also my melasma areas and anywhere else on the skin where I thought I wanted some brightness. I felt like I was getting the vibe of like an Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Brightener as I was putting this on. However, I feel Feel like I get less of that effect as I blend it out and I see how much coverage it actually gives me. I do think it effectively brightens but I don't think it really is super corrective. On the under eye circles, on any um, age spot, sunspot, melasma you may have, it makes it look a little bit better at a glance but ultimately it's not truly correcting and totally camouflaging anything. And I think when many of us see a peachy corrector that might be an expectation that we have for it but to me this is just serving the role of being a brightener. In comparison to the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Brightener, that really gives the skin a brightened up boost, but it also seems to have more coverage than this product. So if it was a choice, do I choose the brightener? Do I choose this? I would go with that Instant Age Rewind Brightener every time. Now, if you want to get this product and you want to try it out, if you feel like it's not enough coverage, consider taking another kind of concealer that you like and blending with this or dabbing a nice coverage skin tone concealer on top and you might have a real fix there. Also, this this might be just what somebody needs who only has a little bit of darkness or dullness to the skin. I'm sure it could effectively handle some small problems but if you got real hardcore darkness you might need more than just this to really solve it. Third and final complexion related product here that I'm going to review for you. It's called the My Skin Perfector Loose Fixing Powder. So this is kind of from the same range as the primer here and this says instant blur effect natural matte finish. So the same kind of claims. I have this in the shade 05 Fair. I really wanted to go for a light shade because I thought potentially this could be a nice under eye setting powder type product. They say it's going to create a flawless finish all day long, um, help to conceal imperfections, leaves 
the skin even and mattified. Um, it's not going to be the type of product that's going to provide a great deal of coverage. This alone is not perfecting the skin. Just like, you know, this is called My Skin Perfector, but we know that doesn't have the coverage to truly perfect the skin. You know, it's just a name that's drawn us in, isn't it? This is a sheer powder and it does feel very silky smooth to the touch and extremely fine. And I actually really like this stuff. I do feel like I can get an instant blurred result from this. As I tap this over the T-zone, I see this covering the nose. I see it mattifying. I also see it kind of just blurring the skin a little bit. I like that. I can tap this around my under eye area. Um, it can definitely take the texture of a tacky concealer and just slightly take that down a notch. Keep in mind, this is a lightweight powder, but if you cake on any kind of powder, you can make it more visible and make it look more cakey. So pace yourself by maybe tapping a little bit into your cap as you work this in little by little on the skin. But for me, I think it's a great product on the T-zone. I can use a bigger brush and buff it around elsewhere. But it's just the kind of product that I think definitely effectively delivers on the blurring claim and the mattifying claim. I felt like my skin looked better for having this on. So to me, that's a two thumbs up product. Now we're going to move on to something for the eyes. This is the thing that I feel like isn't necessarily new to Essence's line. And I've been working with this for some time. I've really been testing a lot of different lash primers. And I'm really happy to say I'm super enthusiastic about this one. And it's probably the cheapest one I own. It is the Volume Booster Lash Primer. It says Super Volume with Super Fruits, Acai Oil, and Mango Butter. Just looking through my drawer here at other primers I've been using, I've got my Milani The Violet one, which is another drugstore one I liked, but I'll explain why I like this one even better. I've tried Marc Jacobs. I'm seeing Lancome in here. Estee Lauder Little Black Primer is still a very, very special product in itself. It's probably one of the best friends to someone who really needs curl holding. That's kind of in its own little category, but if we're just looking for something that can give our mascaras a boost, if we feel like we've got a lot of mascaras in our collection that just simply aren't doing the job well enough and we want to make them work better, this is so great. First off, it's got a brush that's not too oversized, pretty easy to manage, and something I've learned in testing lash primers is that you don't want to apply too much. You don't want to be going stroke after stroke after stroke because eventually what you will inevitably do is just make your own lashes stick together and then the only thing you've got your lashes primed to do is look like fewer lashes by the time that black coat gets on there, right? You want to be able to get the lashes coated very effectively and very quickly with a primer and this really does it best. With the Milani, I kind of have to go through it just a little bit more to really get it sticking on the lashes. Here, as you can see, I very, very quickly take just a pass or two through the lashes and I can see clearly they've been coated, they've been bulked up a little bit, but if you got sparse lashes, you don't want to be taking too many passes through them with your primer. And I do curl them first, keep that in mind. Um, then I pick up my mascara for this video. I thought, let's use an Essence one. I'm using this False Lash Effect mascara, but you can put anything you want on top. In the amount of time it takes to go right, left, I'm back to the right eye, and I would say it's probably not 100% dried down, but it's on its way there. And that's the point where I put the mascara on. It's a little different from the way I've tried to carry out my primer mascara relationship for a while, but this seems to work best. You can see a really great build here. Um, with this particular mascara, I see added thickness, definitely added length, and then once I get that right eye done, I just hop over to the left eye, and again, that primer has had the chance to get, I don't know if you call it tacky, but you know, not 100% dried down, but it's getting there. Get them all coated up, and I feel like the length here is so impressive. To be able to see that kind of success, really regardless of what goes on top, um, I feel like this is just a really nice lash primer. One last little tip that I will do once I really feel like everything is dried, I will blink down onto my fingers ever so slightly and let those lashes kind of really take shape. This does a really good job in reinforcing the curl and giving you a more lasting curl throughout the day. Final product we're going to talk about is a lip balm here. You know I love a tinted lip balm and this one is called Fruit Kiss Caring Lip Balm with 10% almond oil. And I noticed there was a range here and I definitely wanted to go with one that I thought would give me a good tint of color. So I got the one called Cherry Love. And you pop this on and you can see this actually has a little bit of shimmer. But just like a pearlescent 
fluorescent sheen comes through here, and that's kind of unique. I don't really have a lot of tinted lip balms that actually infuse some kind of sheen. And the look really isn't as red as the stick looks. It's more of like a medium pink. And I gotta say, I love the tone. Um, there's actually a very sweet, pleasant taste that comes off of this. A really nice, fruity, like Jolly Rancher type scent. And surprisingly, this can lose a little intensity throughout the day. You could blot a little bit off. It could come off on your water cup or whatever. And you'll still have a little color hanging around. Don't misconstrue this as me calling this a long wearing lip product because it's not. But I'm just saying you can lose a little bit of this pretty shine and sheen and actually still have some color left behind. And I just think it's a super pleasant product. And it's the kind of thing that really is going to get used over and over again in my collection because ultimately throughout the day, I like something comfortable that's just going to give me that subtle amount of color. So my big favorites in these five products that I worked with, I felt were definitely the Lash Primer, the Tinted Lip Balm, and I really like this loose powder. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was useful and I'll see you again soon. Bye.